another day, another set of crazy, crazy roads. Uh, I'm noticing a few changes as we're heading, uh, I want to say southwest, yeah, southwest through Utah. We're almost to the end of Utah. Uh, all of a sudden, I started seeing birch trees and other kinds of uh, non, uh, non-coniferous non trees. I don't know, I forget the, the word for that, but it's been a while since grade school. I just, I love this. I love, like, the landscape just slowly morphing from one area to the next. I feel like because I'm covering all this area of, of North America that I missed last time, that I'm getting a more complete story now, that I understand a little bit more topographically, geologically. I understand North America a bit more. And it's, it's a pretty rewarding feeling. It's a great way to start your day. Stumbled upon water. And not just any water, but steaming water. I don't know if there's supposed to be a hot spring here, but I want to check the water to see if it's actually that hot or if it's just so cold out this morning that everything is steaming. You coming? Come on! Oh, that is some deep snow. What's the water like, champ? Is it warm or cold? I'm gonna guess because he won't go back into it that it's pretty cold. I wouldn't call it warm, but it's definitely not as cold as the surrounding stuff. Interesting. Must be getting into thermal territory. I don't know. I'll have to do some Googling. Well, I'm really glad I wore my long johns today because uh, it's like negative 15 Celsius out there. It is getting nippy. Oh boy. I think I'm gonna hit the road for a little bit longer and uh, I'm not that keen on winter, so I'm gonna head to Zion National Park and then keep making my way south and see if I can't get over this winter thing. This is the weird thing about this area. Uh, first of all, it's like I'm in the middle of Colorado all of a sudden, but I'm actually going up and down canyons. These are canyons. These aren't mountains. And you can tell because they're all plateaued at the same point, but canyons don't really form when you have ample vegetation to keep the erosion away. So all this forest is a relatively recent development. I mean, geologically speaking. Isn't that crazy? So it's like, this was all desert before, and then something changed, and it became forest. And now the, the process of canyonization, uh, I coined that, okay, that's a Simon term, has been halted. And now it seems it like, when it's all covered in snow like this, especially when you're driving around, it feels like you're just going around hill country, like in Quebec or something. Wild, eh? breakfast. Extra Champ's always deciding to have breakfast. He always wants breakfast. But check out this view. Oh my god. This is the kind of thing, man. Like, I can have myself my very normal everyday breakfast, coffee, whatever, just normal routine, and have the most spectacular view. <sighs> me if I'm lonely traveling on the road on my own now and um, most of the time no actually most of the time I'm really enjoying it but um, it's when I'm having a meal 
or preparing a meal. That's probably the hardest part because I love cooking for other people. I love like the family aspect of it. Friends, family, bring together, run a meal. But you know, I have Champ and uh, he spends a lot of time staring at me while I'm eating. So it's almost like a conversation. National Park. It's a really stark difference, you know. Uh, you go down a few uh, few thousand meters and you go south a few hundred kilometers and all of a sudden it's t-shirt weather. All right, let's check it out. Zion National Park. been to Zion National Park before. It was 12 years ago. So this trip here has even more, it has something more. There's something strange about it. I was in a very different place 12 years ago than I am today. I was a 15 year old kid, you know, living with his parents. Um, I was gonna get kicked out of my house shortly after. I was not in a good place, you know, and we did this big trip saw a lot of North America, including Zion National Park, and the beauty resonated with me in a bittersweet kind of way. And I feel that now coming back. I'm looking at the, all of these nostalgic views, these beautiful views, but it holds a place in my memory that's maybe not so great. And it's interesting to rehash that, rehash the idea of Zion National Park in my mind. And, and come at it and now in a time and place where I'm completely different, where I have total control over my life and I'm so much happier. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very bizarre experience. National parks are like works of art. Their beauty draws us in and we want to come see them. But it's the way they make us think. That's what makes us love them. Like the more I learn about national parks, the more I learn about the millions of years that went into shaping it, the history, the people, the more I love it. 
the more I love each one of them, and the more I'll suggest it to other people. Oh, you simply have to go. You have to see it for yourself. But really, I mean, it's beautiful, don't get me wrong, but if you compare it to all the other marvels man has made, there's a lot of beautiful things. Why here? Why come here? Maybe it's the millions of years that have gone into shaping these canyons. Maybe it's what this little pocket, this little Garden of Eden in the middle of a otherwise barren wasteland had, must have meant to people for thousands of years, you know? It's just crazy to think about. And that's what gets me coming back. It's a beautiful national park. You should really go see it for yourself. <laughs> Simultaneously, I feel this guilt, like I think a lot of people do, um, for being just like a uncaring little brat, you know, as a kid. But then, you know, it was also not a great time of my life for other reasons too, right? And and I also hold not like an anger, but just I don't hold myself completely responsible for it too. So it's a weird dichotomy. On the one hand. I feel guilt for being an ungrateful little brat, you know, being brought around the country. But on the other hand, you know, as a kid, you have no control over your life. You have no choice in any manner. And for a lot of those choices, I wouldn't have made them. Even today, I still wouldn't make them. <sighs> so, it's a weird dichotomy where you want to hold yourself responsible on some level, and you want to grow from that. But at the same time, you want to also be the master of your own destiny. You want to know where you're going. Van life problems, man. I guess that's why I live in a van. Alright, um, so my time in the park was amazing, but it's a national park, it's a really popular national park, um, Zion National Park, it's really popular, it's really well maintained, really pristine, um, but a lot of rules, including no dogs, no camping, no fun, bah, 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 bah. anyway, so uh, conveniently enough, outside of that, there's some BLM land, now, I had a little bit of difficulty finding a good spot, but it finally did pan out and you gotta see this view. Like I've done a lot of like pure outback, completely on your own wild camping lately. So this is kind of an, a refreshing change and I could just, I love this lifestyle, man. It's like just when I was getting sick 
and tired of like being out in the woods by myself. Now I have this fantastic view of an entire cityscape. <sighs> we will take, fade away.